I'm Charles Bartlett from the University of Delaware. Here I will present basics of succeeded plant hopper identification and provide an overview of important North American genera. The family Succeidae is a large family consisting of 2,200 species, making it the largest family of plant hoppers. While they are most diverse in the tropics, they are widespread in the temperate and boreal zones, including oceanic islands. The host relations of succeeds are poorly understood. Immatures are subterranean, feeding on roots, and adults are very mobile, making host associations doubtful. Succeeds are seldom numerous enough to be important to directly damage crops, but they are important vectors of plant pathogens, particularly phytoplasm. They are particularly well known as the vector of lethal palm, lethal palm yellowing and 30 species of palms. There are also important vectors of diseases in strawberry and grape. Succeeds are, are recognized mainly by the absence of features found in other plant hopper families. They are medium sized, usually more than four millimeters, often slightly flattened. The fronds bear a median ocellus just above the clypeus, which is found only in the Succeidae and in the Canaridae. The ovipositor is conspicuous and is used to insert its eggs into the substrate. Most plant hopper families have a reduced ovipositor used to adhere the eggs onto the substrate. The second tarsal segment on the hind leg bears a row of spines and the wings are usually prominent. The wings are membranous, usually with prominent CD. Succeeds can be readily identified the genus, particularly in North America, but species require examination of male genitalia. Females often cannot be identified beyond genus and nymphs usually can only be identified the family. There are few comprehensive identification resources, although U.S. tax were advised by Kramer and colleagues, and the European taxa, the Central European taxa, also have a comprehensive treatment. Otherwise, the identification of exotic succeeds can be a real challenge. The classification of succeedae Worldwide, there are three subfamilies and 17 tribes. In North America, there are two subfamilies and five tribes. Also in North America, there are 15 genera, only six of which are common, and 180 species. The, the subfamilies can be recognized by the position of the antenna. In the Bothriocerinae, the antenna are in front of the eyes in cup-like structures. In su the subfamily Succeinae, the antenna are located below the eyes. Within the 6 DNA, important generic differences include the nature of the posterior margin of the head, which in 6 is truncate and melanolaris is notched. The number of corini on the mesonotum, which is 5 in melanolaris and most ecleus, and 3 in 6 and hyphlaxius, and the presence or absence of teeth on the hind tibia. Identification of the species is based on male genitalia. Like all plant hoppers, the ninth abdominal segment is the genital segment, and in males, the turgum and sternum is fused into a cylindrical structure called the pygopher. In Succeidae, the pygopher bear a, a midventral lobe that sometimes is useful for species recognition. The etiological complex requires examination from several views. It includes a basal phallobase, the etiagus itself, and an apical flagellum, each of which can bear processes that are useful for species identification. Now we'll provide an overview of important genera of North American succeeds. The genus Bothriocera is the only genus of Bothriocerinae north of Mexico, so it is the only genus with the antenna located in front of the eyes. But there is a second genus of Bothriocerinae in South America. There are 10 species in the U.S. and additional 30 species that are neotropical. And like other succeeds, species recognition is best based on male genitalia. All Old World species that used to be in the genus Oleris are now in the genus Melanoliaris. It is our largest New World genus, including 48 North American species plus 30 in the tropics. The genus Melanoriaris can be recognized by the presence of five carini on the mesonotum, which is a feature of the tribe Pentasterini. The hind tibia bear lateral spines, and the vertex 
is wide as opposed to trough-like in the Ecliani. Like other groups of clan hoppers, like other groups of succeeds, recognition of the species requires examination of the male genitalia. The genus Succeus has worldwide distribution and includes 260 species, 28 of which occur in North of Mexico. They are similar to Melanoli eris, except the hind margin of the vertex is truncate, and the pronotum has three carini instead of five. Unlike Ecleus, the vertex is wide as opposed to trough-like. They are also similar to Melanolaris in that the hind tibia bears spines, which is different from what's found in Ecleus. The tribe Pentaleini is easily recognized by the fact that the wings are held parallel to the body instead of weakly tent-like in other groups of succeeds. The tribe Pentaleini has two genera north of Mexico, and the genus Pentalia is the only common genus um, found north of Mexico. Pentalia consists of three species in north of Mexico, which can be recognized without the section. However, there are an additional 70 or so species in the Neotropics. They are similar as a genus. It is similar to Succeus in that the mesonotum has three carini and the posterior margin of the vertex is truncate. They're also similar to Succeus in that the lateral spines are present on the hind tibi. The tribe Ecliani is distinguished from the other North American tribes by the absence of lateral spines on the hind tibia. Ecleus can be recognized by the vertex, which is trough-like and very narrow. Also, there are usually five carini on the mesonotum, which separates them from the genus Hoplaxius. The genus Ecleus is very diverse in the southwest United States, where there are 43 species plus an additional 10 in the Neotropics. All the New World species that used to belong to the genus Mindus have now been moved into the genus Hoplaxius. There are 34 species of Hoplaxius north of Mexico, and an additional 30 species found in the Neotropics. They can be recognized by the absence of lateral spines on the hind tibia. Unlike Ecleus, the vertex is broad, and the mesonotum bears three carini. Members of the genus Hoplaxius are usually pale, and some species can be recognized by the coloration pattern of the fronds. However, male genitalia is necessary to confirm species identification. Here are my photo credits. Online resources include the Plant Hoppers of North America website, which is my website, the Plant Hopper, the Leaf Hopper, Plant Hopper, and Solid Vectors of Plant Disease, and 60 a day at Ecoteam. Here is the literature mentioned in the presentation. My collaborators, including particularly the USDA, and thank you. And are there any questions? For the six seeds, you um, presented on six of 15 genera. Are the other genera important, and how can they be recognized? Well, from a regulatory standpoint, they are not that important. Uh, all of the remaining genera are small genera and not likely to be uh, encountered in a regulatory uh, setting. Um, in fact, most of them are not likely to be encountered even by plant hopper specialists that, unless they are looking specifically for them. Um, but nevertheless, it is possible that, you know, it, it's possible that anything might show up. Uh, so to look, to identify those taxa, you can go to Kramer's uh, 1983 publication, or I'm a uh, primary author on a publication that should be out later this year and you can key any plant hopper in North America to genus with that. Why were the names of the genera Mindus and Oleiris changed? Well, this was done be, uh, basically to refine the idea of what those genera meant. Both of those genera are very large groups uh, that had a um, distribution throughout uh, the Laurasian zone, in other words, both in the Nearctic and the uh, Palearctic region. And partly it was felt that it was too big, and partly some of the succeeded workers felt that the new and old world fauna did not belong in the same group. So Mindus was actually referred back to an old genus name, Haplaxia, so that's the original genus name. And 
Melanolearis is a, uh, what had been a subgenus and was raised to a genus to uh, house the, the New World species. I very much doubt that the genera will continue to be defined as they are. I expect there will be further revisions.